Again, uh, we'll start with a short briefing. Um, exercise and followed by motivations before we engage into the, the actual discussions, okay? Again, uh, try to relax as much as possible and watch your breath mindfully. Then we can think the purpose of our life is to be as much benefit as much as possible. At least trying as much as possible not to hurt and harm others. And bring more pain and suffering in others' life. And even though there are many different ways of being helpful and benefiting others, the greatest health benefit that we can do is to help them to overcome their own Delusion, their own defilements, which is the root cause of everyone's suffering. And to help them to achieve not only temporary happiness, but ultimate happiness of. fully awakened state. And to be able to do that, we ourselves need to achieve the Buddha wood as soon as possible. And for that, we need to cultivate the bodhicitta mind and engage in the, the practice of both sort of suggested perfections. To engage in those practices, we need to be reminded of those practices through listening, discussion, and so forth. And that is why we are here, so we can be reminded those important practices, core practices. So then we can apply and implement as much as possible in our everyday life. Okay, so then we can do the Heart Sutra. <clears throat> yeah, so we go to the Heart Sutra. Um, 
I prostrate to the Arya tube of gems, thus did I hear one time the Bhagavan was dwelling in the mass of horses mounted in Ras Keha, together with a great community of monks and great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was observed in the concentration of categories, phenomena, four profound perceptions. Also, at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avaloki, Shora, looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregate also as empty of in hidden nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avaloki, Shora, how should any son of the lineage, train who wish to uh, practice the activities of profound perfection and of wisdom. Um, he said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avaloki, Shora, said this to the Venerable Sharit, um, Sharitatita Putra, Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wish to practice the activity of profound perfection and wisdom should look upon it like this correctly and repeatedly be holding those five aggregate. Uh, be holding those five aggregate as also what also as an empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness form, emptiness not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compulsion of factor, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all the phenomena of emptiness without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compulsion of factors, and no consciousness. No eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind. No visual form, no sound, no order, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomena. There is no eye, no eye element, so on up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and cut. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shari hmm? Buddha, therefore, there is no Attainment, both sort of rely on and dwell in perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration, without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. Um, all the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifest they completely awake in the unsurprised for perfect, complete enlightenment in the reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the Unsurprised mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that totally testify all suffering, should be known as a truth since it's not false. The mantra of perfection of wisdom is declared. Shariputta, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Like that and the then the Bhagavan arose from the concentration and commented. Mm, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avaloki Shara saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as we have indicated. Even the other brothers rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Shariput, Shariputi, the Buddha, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avaloki Shara, and those surrounding the entire team. IRT. Mm. Hello, yeah, in Taiti was um, okay. Along with the world of gods and humans, Asura and Gandavas are overjoyed and highly praised. That's spoken by the Bhagavan and the Mandala.
I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merit I create who listening to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. Sangye Chodan Togi Chonam La Chanju Pato Dhami Kyatush Dagi Shoshe Ki Besonam Ki Lula Hente Sangye Zuba Sangye Chodan Togi Chonam La Chanju Pato Dhami Dagi Shoshe Ki Besonam Lula Hente Sangye Zuba Sangye Doge Nirone Tawa Tunja Pama Seke Tabe Chuni Pembe Me Vodam De La Chao Tsa <clears throat> so, um, so in terms of the, the practice of six perfections, um, we're on the chapter of the third perfection, the perfection of um, patience. And within that, you know, um, last week we, uh, we spoke about a little bit of the um, the nature or definitions or what it means patience and um, also the three type of patience you know the subdivisions um, which are the the patience of uh, voluntarily accepting and um, um, you know um, being okay uh, and not being upset, even when some harm is done, uh, hurt, hurtful act, um, actions is created, as well the patience of, um, yeah, uh, the patience of accepting um, when we, uh, we experience any kind of suffering, difficulties and the suffering, and the patience of, um, Um, in engaging the Dharma practice, you know. And, uh, and then when it comes to the um, practice, then we went to where, um, by starting with the reflecting on this advantage of the impatience and advantage of the patience, you know, um, and in terms of this advantage, you know, um, in terms of disadvantage, if we are impatient and become frustrated and angry, how we destroy our virtues, as well as create negative karma, um, you know, um, to experience, to take a rebirth in one of the lower rebirth, depending on how strong our uh, anger are and our actions, uh, as well as um, creating um, more imprint of anger within our mind, um, and then even in uh, this life, you know, um, how we make many, many enemies because of our, our, our anger, you know, how we disturb and upset others due to our angers and due to that, um, we create more enemy, we create more people who dislike us. Um, and even, even within the people who like us and who, are, um, who care about us because of our anger, we can create some kind of uneasiness in them. Uh, you know, we can create, um, due to our anger, you know, um, we can make them uncomfortable, unsafe, you know, um, and thereby again, um, losing even those who really care about us, who really love us, you know, and, and then, uh, you know, 
also you know when you are angry then we lose our ability to use our common sense our ability to reason and uh, reasoning you know that is our because um, as a human being that is we have the, that is greatest gift to be able to use our mind through reasoning you know and when you are in state of anger again we lost we lose that ability you know being blinded by the anger we cannot use the, the reasoning you know and make uh, use our common sense you know and then you know uh, when it is you know um when anger is strong you know it is clear you know um we have difficulty with focusing on anything we have difficulty with even uh, even we want to sleep we cannot sleep well even if we want to enjoy we cannot enjoy because our mind is so strongly bothered by that anger you know so we lose all the uh, joy in our life when you are in a state of anger you know whatever joy whether it is a um, whether it's on physical um, level or whether it's mental level, you know, we really uh, uh, lose that joyfulness when you are uh, when we are under the influence of uh, anger, and, and definitely our mind is very much disturbed. You know, and there's no calm, peaceness, and so there are so many others. Those are some of the shortcoming, faults, and disadvantage of. Uh, anger you know and then of course um which is which comes through impatience and when we're on the other hand when we are patients you know then it's the opposite um the advantage um the benefit of um practice of patience is the opposite of that you know um it leads at least at closer to our enlightenment uh, you know um, because of patience it helps us to develop love and compassion for uh, others um, because of the patience you know um, we create more virtues and um, and create more uh, leave a more virtuous imprint in our mind you know um, and then you know there is much more peace calmness in our life and because of that we can enjoy our life much much more you know um, regardless of external condition and factors because of our state of mind of the patients um, we will enjoy our life much more you know uh, much more you know um, we create we we create more friends and we keep those friends people who live we are able to keep them all the time because um, due to our practice we kind of um, make them more calm peaceful safe and a sense of environment that they want to be around you and we also create new friends you know and so through that you know we create more more happy and joyful life um in terms of that and then definitely um so um and then i think we are yeah i think um patience is very important you know because um in our life you know since we are uh, we live in a society we come into contact with so many different peoples every day, you know, um, directly, indirectly, you know, sometimes we come in physically direct contact, sometimes even though we might not come in physically direct contact, we come contact through watching the news, we come through news, we know that we, uh, we, uh, so, you know, so many different ways that we come in contact and because we live in a society, because we are not kind of, isolated by ourselves totally separate from the whole society and when we come in contact with others you know um if we don't have patience 
we are always going to be in problem because we all have different views, different ideas. And we can be easily, if we are not patient, if we are impatient, we can be easily, be strongly impact, affected by someone's different views, ideas, um, attitudes, behaviors, you know, and um, that can make our life much more miserable, you know. Um, it could make our life much miserable um, because, you know, being in political view, being in spiritual view, being in uh, many different view, you know, um, because it's a natural, it's a natural for us to have different view. You know, even within ourselves, we have different view within different part of our view changes. And um, as I mentioned on Sunday, you know, and so also therefore, you know, and if we are impatient, then, you know, we can be easily disturbed, frustrated and angry by someone's different and um, view and so forth. And then, um, um, you know, it affects our mind and out of that kind of frustration, anger, then we try to, you know, um, respond with that negative state of mind uh, in an unhealthy way, emotionally, physically, verbally, and then that create more divisions instead of bringing more together and harmony, we create more divisions and, and whether it is with our, you know, children, parents, whether it is with our friends, partners, or whether it is with the, the society we live in. And if we don't have patience, then because there's different view all the time, and we are always going to be impatient with each other, and we are all going to fight. And, and, and that is not going to help for the society, is not going to help individually. Mm. And so therefore, on the other hand, if we have patience, you know, and if we without patience, if we listen to others' different views, different opinion, with that kind of patience, then, you know, um, our mind will not be so affected so strongly, negatively. And then we can have better conversations, more respectfully. Even though we have different views, but still we can listen better with each other. And we can hear better. We can understand it better. And when we are able to listen better, when we are able to hear better, when we are able to uh, com um, understand better, then we will be able to communicate better. And when we are able to communicate better, we are more likely to find better solutions and find, a, you know, um, without having to fight all the time, that we can find a kind of something in between, middle way, you know. Um, we can be able to find their solutions, you know. Um, but when we are impatient with each other, then we cannot, we cannot hear properly. We, we can't listen properly. We can't hear properly. We can't understand properly. And with that state, then it is very difficult to have a, um, good conversations and honest, sincere com conversations. And when there's, um, then it's extremely hard to find a solution, extremely hard to find the solutions. You know, and so again, patience comes with so important uh, in our life, um, in what directions our life goes, you know, and, um, and what kind of relationship we have with others, you know. Uh, one of the key factors will be, uh, you know, um, yeah, about the um, patience. So, so, you know, those are some of the, why we need the patience uh, 
Um, so yeah. And so I guess, um, where did I, I think, is this how to cultivate the patients? The actual way to cultivate the patients, yeah? I think maybe it's there. 170, page number 170. Yes, sir. I think it's uh, engaging in the bodhisattva behavior. Okay. Okay, so that is continuity of the, okay. Mm. So that is where he said how to gain certainty regarding the faults? Yes. Yeah, okay. So yeah, uh, the, as Bodhisattvas, uh, it says, you know, um, in terms of having a direct um, harmful um, potential, direct harm and potential to hurt others and harm others, there's no stronger, um, powerful, negative, um, state of mind or emotion than the anger, you know. When we have anger, it has a very powerful potential to bring so much um, harm to others and oneself. So therefore, you know, um, that is why it is saying um, there's no ne more powerful negative actions than the anger, uh, you know. In the same way, there is no powerful um, positive actions or protections or practice that the patients, um, because it is the uh, the antidote to that most powerful um, negative state of mind and um, and uh, the anger, you know. And so that is what it says. And therefore, you know. Um, by reflecting on advantage and of patient, disadvantage or impatient and anger, then we try to practice the patients in so many different ways, you know, by by trying to apply many different analyses, different practice, different methods in whatever way that we, we can apply um, so that we can have a strong practice of patience. Mm. So here it is saying, you know, um, according to the compendium of training, it is in terms of, you know, um, bringing to a very strong uh, ripening effect of lower rebirth and as I was saying, destroying the virtues. Uh, it is not only the anger, but also other negative emotions such as wrong views, you know, um, that as that um, thinking that there is no law, law of cause and effect, you know, um, such a wrong view can also be equally very destructive in, uh, in bringing that into negative, um, rap, uh, ripening result in a lower rebirth and destroying the virtues, as well as abandoning the Dharma, you know, and then um, this person such as both sattvas and gurus and being arrogant towards them and so forth. So, and since again, um, we don't know where is both sattvas, you know, we don't know who is both sattva, who is not both sattvas. So we have to be very careful with everyone, you know. Um, of course, uh, you know, if we get angry to an ordinary being, it is still very negative and it's still very harmful. But if we get angry to more kind of, you know, holy beings such as both sort of and Buddhas, it is even more stronger um, negative karma. And since we don't know who is both sort of, who is not both sort of us, just by the external appearance, you know, we can't read that mind. And whether someone's both sort of us, not both sort of us, it is state of mind. And so therefore we have to be more um, mindful and careful that, you know, mm -hmm. And so then next is um, the actual cultivating the patients and how to cultivate the patients. 
um, and in regard to the first patients, you know, the patients, um, to be able to be the patient to keep our mind undisturbed, unagitated when someone does something hurtful and harmful, you know? And so, and how, of course, I think maybe in a way we all want to, uh, we all, more or less we all want to do that. I think there is some, uh, you know, um, we don't want to get angry and we want to be patient. But the then problem is how can we do that, you know? That is the thing. And so here, uh, you know, as Shandeva explained in his chapter six in um, Guides to Bodhisattva Way of Life, here Lama Tsongkhapa brings up some of the point from that, that teachings. You know, and one way of looking is, you know, um, when someone does something harmful and hurtful to yourself or, you know, our friends, families, or anyone, you know, any sentient beings, um, normally which disturb your mind, which agitate your mind, you know. So when that happens, one way of looking is, one way of not being so upset and angry with that person uh, and practicing patience is by checking whether that person who is acting out of that anger and hurt, or whatever that might be, you know, sometimes it could be out of anger, sometimes it could be out of ignorance, Sometimes it could be out of, you know, arrogant. Sometimes it could be um, out of jealousy, you know. Uh, it could be due to any of those negative emotions. It could be any of those negative emotions. Due to any of that emotion, when they engage in something very painful, hurtful, harmful behavior, actions, you know, we get upset when we see that. You know, we sit upset, we get angry, you know. So, and when we get upset and angry, of course, again, our mind is disturbed. You know? So then in that way, one way of dealing with that is thinking, you know, is that person who's engaged in such hurtful and harmful actions to whom, to whom ever, you know, that disturb our mind? Does that person have, does that person did that harmful or hurtful actions by having total control over himself or herself? Or did that person engage in that harmful action because he or she does not have a total control? You know, that's one way of analyzing, investigating, you know. Mm. And when you investigate that, you know, it's clear that person does not have a control over their um, their, their, their emotions, you know, they have no control over their emotion, whatever that emotion might be. It could be arrogant, selfish attitude, self-centeredness, uh, it could be ignorance, it could be um, anger, you know, it could be jealousy, whatever. And they are acting that's hurt, harmful, hurtful, because their actions is totally motivated, controlled by that negative emotions. And that person had no control over their negative emotions. It is not that that person has total control over their anger and then decided to get, allow their anger to arise and then out of anger, they decided to hurt and harm. It's not that the person's or total control over that ignorance. They know they are totally ignorant. And despite knowing they're ignorant, they allow that ignorance to generate that ignorance, um, um, you know, knowingly. And then out of that ignorance, they act it, you know. Even though they might be ignorant, they are not aware they are ignorant. You know, so that means they have no control over it. Sometimes they are arrogant and they are not even aware they are arrogant. They are selfish. They are not even aware they are selfish. 
And sometimes even when you are aware, even they are aware, they have no control. Some, and that happens to us also, you know. We know we are angry and we don't want to get angry and still we cannot control it. We know we are angry and we know that is not good. And we know that we're, I don't, I shouldn't be angry and I should, I should not feel that. And even we try, still we cannot control and it just totally overtake us. And then out of that, we kind of um, act in an unhealthy, hurtful, harmful way, you know. And so understanding that, just as it happened to us with our own experience, then we also try to understand others are also being like that, same, similar situations. Similar situations, you know, by understanding that. So when we understand that person does not really have control and they are acting out of that uncontrolledness, then we might be able to feel not so, so much anger, so much hatred. Our anger, hatred can be less. Sometimes we might even feel compassion for them because we feel they are a slave or their own defilement, their own delusions. So they are prisoner of their own delusion there. So when you understand someone is prisoner and slave of something else, we can feel compassion for that person. Even though maybe we might not be agree with their behavior, but we can feel compassion for that. Someone, a bigger bullying person, bullying someone to be bullied to someone else. Do you get it? So a stronger bully person use his power to bully someone to make that bully someone else. So of course, someone who is that bullying someone, that behavior is not good, but also you know that not because he or she wanted to bully that, but because there was another more powerful bully who is totally in control and making him or he, him to do, do that. And so therefore, then we can, while we don't agree with that behavior, but still we can feel maybe a little bit more compassion because he or she has no power, because he or she, he or she is totally a prisoner and slave of something else. In these cases, the defilement, the delusions. And so, uh, you know, um, and that kind of mental afflictions or defilements, um, you know, um, come from previous imprint, you know, and um, it's mental, and some, um, you know, um, previous imprint and then certain way of thinking, you know, certain way of thinking which are not proper, incorrect, you know, by thinking then that such delusions uh, arises and then it totally kind of um, So, um, if we and um, and so here is say you know the second uh, the second is so in that way you know it is in, inappropriate to get angry, um, given that he or she has no control you know, and so the example given here is you know, um, for example here it is giving a spirit you know someone who is uh, overpowered by another spirit, another being, and then um, no control over 
the person's behavior because of another being has overtaken that some kind of speed over. So even when someone tried to help that person, but because that person is not total in conscious, sense consciousness, because his her mind is overtaken by another spirit. So even that person tried to harm you who is trying to help, when the person know that person has no control, but it is another being that is in control, then not only you don't feel angry, but you can still feel compassion. And you, you want to help that person to be free from that spirit, whatever, um, if, if there is any way that it can be, you know. Or another way of looking at that, you know, instead of spirit, we can look if we have difficult of that, we can look from a, some mental problem, you know. Sudden sickness. Certain people have some sudden sickness and mental and uh, mental problems. And when they are overpowered by that, sometimes they don't know what they are saying. They don't know what they are doing. They have no control. And even the nurse, doctors, or their friends, family, even they try to help instead of response in positive way, sometimes they might try to hurt you and harm you, even when you're trying to help them, whether it's the nurse, whether it's the assistant, the doctor, or any family members, friends. And even when they try to hurt and harm you with their speech, with their action, uh, physical behavior, everyone knows that he or she is mentally, have mental problems. Everyone know that he or she has mental problems, but he or she has no control in their behavior, their actions. And so therefore, instead of getting upset and angry, sometimes you feel even more compassion for them because you can see the pain and suffering of them having no control and totally kind of being, you know, um, driven by something else. So you can even, so here the, it says someone who is Bodhisattvas or who is trying to um, follow the Bodhisattva path, then we should try to understand um, also similar situation like that. And so therefore uh, not getting so upset and angry. Not getting so upset and angry, you know. Mm. And so as, as it is, uh, you know, as 400 stanza says, it, you know, um, yeah. A doctor or any, any someone trying to help is undisturbed, even they try to be angry and hurt you because you know that they have no control. And so, um, so in that way, you try to keep your mind undisturbed un, uh, without angry and um, Patrick, instead, you know, patience, sense of compassion. Mm. And here, the Master Chanda says, this is not the fall of sentient beings, it's the fall of mental afflictions. And so I think it is a really good point here where he is making we have to differentiate the persons and persons' actions. And persons and persons' actions and the person's behavioral action driven by that mental afflictions. So why, you know, why we try to stop? If there is any way we can stop, such a harmful behavior and such mental state we try to do but at the same time to feel compassion for the person for the sentient beings at least not have anger and hatred and if you want to be angry and have hatred if you want to blame then we blame the delusions of that person if you want to be angry be angry to the delusions if we want to have a resentment, have a resentment to the anger, uh, the, to the delusion, not the persons. 
you know. Um, and so the wise who have analyzed the data are not disturbed by saying something. So when we analyze that way, and through that kind of analyzing, we come to convictions and certainty that, you know, absolutely, absolutely that person has no control over their, no control over their delusions. And due to not having a control over the delusions, therefore they are behaving and acting in such harmful behavior. Then we don't really feel so much anger, hatred, and our mind will be less disturbed by that person's um, actions and behavior, and that we can practice more patience. Um, but if we are not convinced, and if we don't have total certainty and deep convictions that that is the case, then it would be difficult. If we feel they have control, and despite they have control, they still harm her, then it will be more difficult to feel, not to get upset. It will be more difficult not to get upset. It will be not difficult, it will be more difficult not to get disturbed. It will be more difficult to feel compassion. But when we really understand that persons have no control, and that is why that person is behaving that way, if the more conviction you have that understanding and feeling, the more easier it is to feel, um, not to be disturbed, to practice patience, to be compassionate. And sometimes it's hard for us to, when we see others, it's hard for us to know that that person has no control, you know. But we can apply with our own experience and see how often we do that out of being uncontrollable. Very clear, and sometimes we feel so embarrassed, so ashamed, so much guilt after that, that negative emotion, such as anger has arises, and out of anger we have said something, or have done something, and we feel so bad about it later. If that is how we feel so bad about later, why did we do it at that time? Because we couldn't control. It's out of control. Our mind was almost like possessed by some another beings, you know. Uh, not another being, of course, it is possessed by one of those negative emotions, such as anger, you know. So, so bringing our own experience is helpful to understand others. When we don't bring our own experience, sometimes we feel, oh, you know, they have total control. Despite they have control, they decide to do that. But when we bring our own experience and we know how many times that we don't want to do, but we do those behavioral actions because we, we are out of, out of control and due to one of those delusions, you know. So, and also another, you know, um, it, it is not here, but in, um, um, in, in uh, again, Chandra Kiddis, um, the Sublimate in middle way school as another, in regard to patients, you know, another point he make is, you know, why we, uh, why there's no reason to get angry and trying to retaliate, you know. Um, he said, by getting angry and retaliating because of someone's behavior or harmful behavior, or someone has done something harmful in the past, is it, is it going to change the situation? If it's not going to change, then um, it is useless. There's no point in doing that. It only hurts you, you know. We cannot reverse the harm which has already been done. We cannot undo that by getting angry and upset. By getting upset and angry, if we can undo the suffering, the pain, the hurt, the harm, 
then again there is some meaning in the, doing that but since it cannot undo and reverse that um, so therefore um, it only make things worse and it only um, make you more painful and so therefore there's no point also reflect and contemplate and from that point of view can be helpful and next here you know Lama Tsongkhapa also saying you know also thinking from karmic point of view you know um, can be helpful you know um, so here you know by thinking you know because we get more upset and it is you know we get more upset and angry when we blame to that person for our our or anyone's everything for that person for all the pain and sufferings but we see you know that person is only a very small part of that there are many causes and conditions that lead to that kind of suffering that kind of pain that kind of hurt harm and our own karma past karma is involved there karmic potential is involved there and that person's behavior or actions is only one of the cause among men so many cause conditions and the main cause conditions is our own our own you know um karmic imprint or karmic potentials and so when we take that certain responsibility then again when we don't totally blame it then again it is more easy to be patient undisturbed it's more easy to not be so strongly angry and hatred you know and it's more easy to easier to practice the patience and maybe even have a compassion and also another way of looking it not only is not only seeing it is a we are experiencing the result of karma you know but also seeing you know by experiencing that we are exhausting and clearing the karma you know so that we don't have to deal with it anymore so in that way we see something positive and as i mentioned uh, i've mentioned uh, in the past you know uh, i don't know where you know when but it's like you know sometimes you, you have let's say uh, food poisoning you know and then through diarrhea or through throwing up you put all that the food that has been poisoned and through that you can clear and so even though whether it's a diarrhea or whether it's throwing is unpleasant but by throwing and diarrhea it clear that all the poisons so in it is it is for temporary is unpleasant but in long term is good because then you don't have to deal that poison for months and years and long term and so then is more worldwide going through there's some um, some kind of unpleasant and discomfort similarly we think that way we dealing with karma sometimes we only think oh it's my negative karma you know and so sometimes we might get upset with our karma but if you see by this karma a little bit of discomfort pain suffering whatever we are going through we are purifying a strong negative karma that could have lead us to much more painful much more um, um, stronger uh, result of that then we might feel more more um, positive about that just like that throwing up discomfort of throwing or diarrhea you know so that is another way to I think it is um, um, it is it is a um, important point to think that part. You know, not only just think is a result of negative karma, but actually it is um, purifying and cleansing, exhausting the negative karma. You know, so mm. and then there, there it give you an example. You know, um, yeah, I think here it is giving an example. You know. Um, it is like here the example is given slightly different um, you know um, if we have some kind of serious sickness you know in order to cure that uh, sickness if, it, if we have to go through some kind of surgery that can cure um, that then of course we will be 
we will be able to bear it and without feeling even though if you have to say you have to go through surgery of course nobody want to go through surgery you know but if it's going to fix the problem that we have the otherwise we will be having for whole 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 our life you will be delighted that there is a, that you can be cured by that surgery and that you would be um happy to know that uh, you can go search it and you'll be happy to go through that if if that um the chronic disease that if you don't do that that you might be having through your whole life similarly so you know if here is saying saying the examples is of course it is using some kind of old style of uh, uh here i'm using search it but here it is using the according to some medicine Tibetan medicine, you know, there are things like they do certain things, burning, you know, like with certain um, fire their foot, um, and then cutting, you know, sort of like that. So, and then next is the next uh, how to cultivate patience uh, in dealing with uh, the suffering, you know, uh, whether it's um, you know, sometimes so the suffering that we experience due to changes, you know, in element, our our own health, due to, you know, environment, um, due to whatever, you know. Um, and one of here, as Shandeva says, one way of dealing is, you know, instead of being so, your mind so being disturbed, because of the situations, um, the painful situations, the difficult challenges situation that we might be going through, you know, um, trying to see whether there is a solution to that or not, you know, whether there's a cure or solution to that suffering and pain and the problem or not. If there is a solution to that, why be so disturbed and wary? and um upset you just have to try to do things to cure it to to solve the problem because there is solutions and if there's no cure if there's no solution to the problem why worry about it because it is something nothing you can do about it and so it's a waste of your is a waste of our um, energy resource and um and unnecessary uh, problems, you know. Um, so it is a useless because it, it, there is no benefit in that in being upset, being wary, um, very disturbed by that, you know. And so through that understanding, you know, again, always that is one of the verses His Holiness very often recite and he says he often use it you know very often you know always when we have certain problems always analyzing whether there is a solution to the problem or not if there is solution try to fix it if there's no solutions forget about it move forward there's nothing you can do by giving so much attention to that you know and um and not only that, if we become, a, uh, there is a disadvantage, if we become an impatient to, a, um, you know, some of the difficult, challenging um, situation, and painful, suffering situations, if we become an impatient, then even with the slightest discomfort, it can disturb your mind easily. On other hand, if someone is patient and through practicing patient and as they get familiar with that, even they have a big problems, still their mind is undisturbed. So again, it is not about whether the problem is big or small. It's not about whether the discomfort or the pain is big or small. 
it is your state, how much we become disturbed by such discomfort or pain and problem is our state of mind. Our ability to have patience and bear it, endure it, or our inability to bear it and uh, uh, in, uh, endure it, you know. And again, uh, we can see, you know, we can see uh, with sometimes with ourselves, sometimes with people around us, you know. Sometimes you see some people who seems to have a huge, big problem, you know. Big problems. It's not a small problem, big problems, huge problems. Um, but they have this ability to not to, um, their mind not being disturbed and they are able to deal with that easily without their mind being disturbed. And then sometimes we have people, you know, who cannot even smallest discomfort, you know, it affect them, it disturb them so much. Very small, small discomfort, not talking about big problems. Slightly hot, slightly cold, already their, their very mind is disturbed. It doesn't have a big problem, you know, very slight, it is not even unbearably hot or cold. For them, they feel that way because of their state of mind, you know. But if you really check it, it's not even unbearably cold. It is not even unbearably uh, hot. Definitely is hot. Definitely is a little bit more hot. Definitely is a little bit more cold. Definitely there's a little bit of discomfort physically. But that is it. But sometimes people get very, their mind get very disturbed and they cannot handle it and they complain and become quite miserable. And so again, what it shows is not the problem itself. The discomfort itself is the state of mind. And the more, if we have the patience to in, in effort to endure and bear and accept, you know, and if we train in that with a small, we start with small and slowly, slowly with our practice family that then we'll be able to bear endure even the more bigger problems, bigger pain, big, bigger sufferings. And, and then slowly even the biggest problem, you know, and your mind not being disturbed by that. <clears throat> hmm? So that is where it says, you know, um, if we are impatient, intolerant, you know, even the small things disturb us. Or on the hand, if we have, if we are tolerant patience, then even the biggest problem will not disturb us, you know. Hmm. And so therefore, we have to train our mind to reach a point where we are undisturbed by the, even the biggest problems, even the biggest discomfort. And to reach that point, it, even we want to reach that point, it's not going to come like this. Suddenly, we have to start practicing that every day on small level. and slowly, slowly increase and improve it. On our everyday life, trying to be tolerant, patient, and being okay and happy with even small, small discomfort. Saying, you know, of course it's a little bit discomfort, but it's not bad. I'm happy because I'm not having a big problem. So with that, just learning to be happy and being fine and being okay and tolerant with small, small discomfort. And then through that, with that training, then definitely we'll be able to, slowly we'll be able to bear and endure even a little bit more, even a little bit more bigger discomfort, um, 
problem and so forth. And then slowly it's the big, very, very big and that, you know, and so that's so. how. And also, you know, um, here you're saying in dealing with uh, having a, being a tolerant patient with uh, the suffering, you know, one way of doing is again, thinking the advantage, good um, of suffering, you know. If we think there is nothing goodness in that, then of course, you know, when we encounter that, it, 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 it disturbs us. Something you didn't want and you face something you, you want, you know. But on the other hand, if you feel, you know, there is something goodness in that, post in that, you know, you wouldn't mind encountering that. Because there is something goodness in that, there is something positive in that. And so therefore, contemplating, reflecting and meditating on the advantage and the goodness of the sufferings, you know. So. so one of the, one of the, some of the advantage here, it says, you know, as Shantideva said, you know, is because of the suffering, if we really use it, we, it can help us to develop a renunciation. When we don't have renunciations, you know, when we don't have suffering, we can be easily distracted, thinking, oh, life is great, samsara is great. I don't mind samsara, you know. I'm okay with samsara because life is great. No problem. Don't we feel that way sometimes? Sometimes we, we feel, why people are complaining about samsara? Why, they are, why Buddhism is making so much fuss about samsara and things always saying about sufferings, you know? Life is great. It's not bad. Then one day, boom. And then, you know, it's like hitting by being a, uh, uh, your head has been hidden by a hammer, you know. Then everything changed. Samsara is so miserable. Life is so miserable. Then we go from one side to another side, the two opposite side, you know. And so, you know, so when that suffering happens, then it reminds us you know, the nature of samsara, you know, and therefore, you know, it allow us to understand, you know, true nature of samsara. By understanding true nature of samsara, then it allow us to develop non-attachment to the samsara and samsara experience. It allow us, it open our heart to be less attachment, less attachment to samsara, samsara experience. And that allow us to develop a sense of true inspirations for the uh, liberation, wanting to free from the samsara. So then it comes, the, the wish for the liberation then really come from your heart instead of just from mouth, you know, because of that understanding. And so therefore it helped us to develop the renunciations because of the uh, suffering, you know. And so, yeah, um, so it helped us to wanting to free from the samsara and the wish for the uh, liberation and true liberations and also you know it, it, it has a positive qualities because it helps us to overcome arrogant you know and sometimes again we can be arrogant due to many things you know sometimes we think we are we are arrogant because of our health you know or sometimes because of the way we look our appearance sometimes due to our knowledge, educations, sometimes due to our political views, sometimes due to our spiritual views, and whatever, you know, um, 
uh, sometimes we can be kind of arrogant, feeling we are more superior than others. Sometimes due to our, you know, financial situations. So it could be due to whatever, you know, some, we have sometimes sense of arrogance, which is not healthy, positive for oneself and to others. And sometimes, but we do have that. And so again, when suffering arises, and it is like you have been kind of almost knocked down. And then when you have been knocked down, then you feel you become, we become more humble and humility. It brings, you know, so it helps us to be more grounded. It helps us to be more grounded with humbleness and humility. And so therefore in that way, again, it is helpful, you know. So therefore, it helps us to uh, overcome sense of feeling arrogant and superiority with others, you know, and feeling with more humble and humility. Also, it has positive qualities, you know, um, to, to abandon the negative actions or karma, you know, because by understanding whatever suffering I'm experiencing is due to our, my own negative actions unhealthy actions and if i do not want that negative if i do not want that painful sufferings i should stop the cause and condition that bring to that result and therefore it help it inspire and it help us to stop creating more negative karma or negative actions you know and also for non-virtuous actions and um, Also, it help us to create more virtues and positive karma because you know we know if if I I do not wish suffering, such suffering, problems, pain. What I want is happiness, you know. And if I want happiness, happiness does not come without cause and condition. It comes to certain cause and conditions, and the cause of the happiness is virtuous actions, positive actions, positive karma. And so therefore, again, it, it, uh, it inspired and it, it helped us to develop um, that kind of, um, um, in, to engage us into virtuous actions. So again, from that perspective, it's a beneficial, you know. Um, and then also the one of the uh, important is, you know, it helped us to cultivate compassion towards others. Because of our own suffering, we begin to understand the suffering more personally. And when you understand your suffering personally with your own experience, then you can understand the suffering of others who are going through similar and even worse. Otherwise, it feels like, you know, we are just they are suffering there, but we are looking from like, almost like watching a movie, you know. It doesn't really kind of affect us, you know. We see suffering, but it doesn't really affect us. It doesn't really make us unbearable. And thereby allowing us to feel compassion for them. As though we are watching a movie, you know. And we see that, you know, very often. That is how a lot of time, you know, at this is to me, you know. When you are in this far away, you know, especially suffering that we have not experienced ourselves is more difficult to understand the pain of others. Suffering that you have gone through, it is easy to feel the pain, the suffering of others, because you have gone through how 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 bad it is, how you know painful it is, how miserable it is, how and so you can really feel when someone is going through a similar, you can feel their pain and suffering. But sometimes when we have no ideas what it like to be in that state, then it's much more difficult to feel suffering for others. And so therefore going through suffering ourselves and to understand you know um, then it become real more real 
you know, and and then you really can feel the pain and suffering of others better. And when we really feel the pain and suffering of others, then you know that allow us to feel more compassion for them, you know. And so therefore, you know, it gives rise. So many of the teachers in Kadamba teachings and many other teachers also says, you know, the suffering when you when you think on yourself, it helps you to develop renunciation. And when you think in relation to others, it helps us to develop compassion. And so that in that way, suffering has certain positive positiveness and positive qualities in that. And the more we see that positive qualities in that, the less we have aversion towards that. The less aversion we have towards that, the more easier it is to be tolerant and patient. It doesn't disturb your mind so much, you know, less disturbance, you know. Um, on the other hand, if we see only negative, nothing positive, then the, we have stronger aversions. And with that stronger aversions, you know, when we face it, then um, it disturbs our mind more strongly and um, make our life, uh, make us and our life more miserable, you know, and more painful. Mm. And so here it's saying, you know, sometimes when we think about that, you know, patience, whether it's a patience with us, our own suffering or whether it's patient with someone who uh, hurt and harms, it seems very difficult, you know, seems, seems sometimes we feel it's impossible, you know. It sounds good idea, but it feels like it's impossible. And so here again, um, by quoting from a, um, it must be from Shanti Devas, yeah. Or what's that? Hmm. Something that does not get easier. Yeah, you know, there is nothing that cannot be easier when we have practice and familiarize with it, you know. Something that it feel impossible at the very beginning because we are not familiar with that, because we are not used to that. Um, but as we get familiar and as we do again and again, as we get used to it, familiar, then something which feel impossible also become possible, not only possible, very easier. You know, in same way, so therefore here is saying, you know, if we train to be more patient and tolerance with a small, small discomfort that eventually we will be able to um, feel our mind undisturbed, um, patience, tolerance, even with the biggest, even the big problems. And that is the quality of the mind, you know. The quality of mind, the mind is, from one perspective, is very, very stubborn. From another perspective, is very, very, uh, you know, um, flexible. And with the practice, um, with the repeating practice, meditations, um, then it can be um, easier and easier. Hmm? So yeah, um, if you put a model intentionally accept the suffering and expose yourself to suffering in small steps, your strength to accept suffering will grow. It doesn't mean you have to actually expose here, doesn't mean you have to go and search for a problem or suffering, you know. Intentionally going and looking for suffering, you know, it doesn't mean that. It just means when sudden discomfort and suffering arises in our life we learn to be more tolerant and more accepting and uh, more enduring without our mind being so disturbed and so if we do that then eventually we will be able to deal with much bigger problems and sufferings and the third is uh, the third um, the third patience you know 
Um, so um, the third is cultivating a strong kind of uh, you know aspirations, uh, cultivating a strong inspiration and faith uh, and convictions in our Dharma practice. You know. Um, with a more stable mind without being biased. And so, you know, uh, such as um, the object of faith, such as three jewels, you know, having a strong convictions, aspirations, um, not out of blindly, but with the reasoning and, um, you know, with the reasonings um, by understanding that is supported by the wisdom, you know, um, having a faith such as individuals um, and the object that we need to actualize, understand, you know, to selflessness, you know, such as um, the emptiness of persons and emptiness of phenomena, you know, or selfness of persons and phenomena, you know, and the object of desire or inspirations, you know, um, uh, the great power of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas that we can, uh, that can, that we can use to help and benefit others in oneself. You know, um, the ability, the power to be able to be a greater benefit and help to oneself and others. And, and as well as you know, um, the object that need to be adapted, such as the practice, such as uh, um, ten virtues actions and discarded such as the ten non virtuous actions you know um, the cost that excellent contact and quality yeah um, so yeah the excellent contact are the virtuous actions and faulty contact are the um, non virtuous actions you know and then object of meditations you know such as yeah and enlightenment the 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 result and and the, the path the meaning to achieve um, the method for attaining that and the path of both sort of training the object of here and uh, you know hearing reflecting or thinking and meditating on holy dharma um 12 scriptural categories and so forth um so that is and again, you know, when we engage in the Dharma practice, you know, when we engage in the Dharma practice, it's not always going to be so easy, you know. When we are trying to practice the Dharma, it is not always going to be easy, you know. Sometimes we will have some difficulties, externally, internally, obstacles, external obstacles, internal obstacles, you know due to many causes and conditions and and when those obstacles arises when sudden difficulty arises hardship arises you know if we are impatient you know then we easily give up on the other hand if we are patient with that we don't give up we continue to persist and we continue to practice even even when it's not so easy and when you are consistent and continue to practice and be patient then eventually you will have a result of your practice if you are impatient you know then you give up very quickly and then uh, you wouldn't have the um, you wouldn't have the result you know There's a question, is it the third one, patience with Dharma itself or patience with oneself? Um, no, it's patience with the Dharma, you know. Yeah, it is uh, patience in, um, yeah. So in relation to the Dharma, you know, in relation when we are, uh, mm, when you're engaging in the practice of the Dharma, you know, uh, in relation to Dharma, you know, then uh, 
we can become impatient with the practice itself, you know, the path itself. Um, Dharma itself, you know. Uh, for example, sometimes we have a, you know, um, sometimes we have doubt whether there is karma or not. Sometimes we have doubt whether there is um, refuge or not, three jewels, you know. And when you have that doubt, you know, um, then we become impatient, you know. And um, when you have a conviction in them, you know, it can be both ways, you know, sometimes impatience lead us to doubt. Sometimes doubt lead us to impatience. You know, sometimes we have doubt, so then we become impatient, you know. Sometimes we have impatience, then we start to doubt because we think, you know, um, I didn't have the result through my practice, you know, quickly, and we didn't see the result, and then we started to become doubting about um many many of the practice and the teachings and the dharma you know um, so sometimes it can it seems to kind of can lead it seems at least um to me you know when i reflect it could lead to both you know. so with that that is the patience um so i think we finished the patience um so if if, if there is any if there is any um, questions or comments, remark, please do so. Whether whether um, directly or whether by sending through the chat. But of course, if we don't have, then we just um, do the dedications. I guess maybe we don't have, so we can do the dedication. <clears throat> so the two verses, the first two verses we do in um, Tibetan chanting, but if you want to do it in English also, you, that's most welcome however you feel um, more comfortable, you know. Gyawa di nyo to lama sangke to kyo ne do wa chi kya ma le pa e sa la kwe so do we do the dedication for um his holy name so do we the wish granting wish fulfilling jewels source of every single benefit and happiness in this world to the incomparable kind pensing just by this is may all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled <laughs> Thank you very much.